Welcome back gang, it's Delta here from DeltaIsGaming.com and in this video we cover Templar Tanking Part 2, the Atlas build. As you can see from this video in Vet Sanctum Ophidia, the premise behind the build is self-sufficient healing and tanking, making it much easier to find groups and complete content for those very rare healers and tanking roles. What this build excels at is hybrid gameplay, something that can tank and something that can heal mainly as an off healer. What this does not excel at is main tanking for a 12 player trial. So if this looks fun and you want to learn more about core to tanking Templar and ESO, let's talk about the Atlas. It's a pretty cool name, huh? So the nuts and bolts of Templar tanking right now and Templar healing, hybrid healing, a lot of PvPers will use this as sword and board, sword and shield. And the reason why is Templars do not have to have a rest our resto staff to get their best heal, which can hit you and another player. So you go to Restoring Light, everyone loves it or hates it, Breath of Life. You can hold down block, you can get the benefit of healing someone, and it has a huge range. It does have a monster cost. So this opens up the opportunity for Templars to be able to tank while holding aggro, healing themselves and other players, making it pretty cool for a small group play, like PvP or group play like dungeons and but trials it suffers a little bit from uh, the usual tanking setup needed to make sure those heavy hitting bosses don't nuke you. So for group play let's talk about heavy armor resistance and sword and shield. The heavy armor passes were changed recently making it not as valuable to use it for tanking which seems odd. The reason why is you don't get block cost reduction like you used to. Now Wraith gives you more spell damage weapon damage that's really cool. Increased healing receive, obviously that's great, but increased magic and stamina off a of heavy attack, not so much. The real benefit here is constitution right now and resource regeneration. And all heavy, you're looking at around 15 to 1200 resources back. You use Black Rose, you're looking at 2000 or more. So that's the really good change. It becomes more offensive for damage and it becomes more sustainable. However, where you get your block mitigation and reduction is actually sword and shield. So they move that over here. Now the reason that's important is because we don't need to wear heavy armor to be a powerful tank now. Because we get all the block cost reduction here. So we've got this one and you got this. Increased weapon damage and the amount of damage you can block. So those two passives right here are all the reason you need to be a sword and board right here. And people use it in light armor have been for a long time and it's even more effective now due to the heavy armor change. But so we take advantage of this premise that you don't need to wear heavy armor to tank. So you look at my unbuff stats here. Physical resistance 18k, spell resistance 22,000. Now when we have our certain specific buffs up, well, I'm going to get to you in the gear in a second. In five pieces of light armor, we're hitting hard cap and spell resistance and 28k in physical resistance. In five pieces of light armor, you can be very, 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 very tanky using the armor master set. The five pieces of light armor allows you to do is essentially cast more. So you have reduced cost here, you have increased recovery. This is probably the reason we're hitting hard cap and spell resistance. You get more crit and then penetration is not so much important, but crit is good because it applies to damage and healing. The premise of this build is we're taking the opportunity to wear light armor, still be uh, sufficient, still be tanky and allow us to heal someone else and some and ourselves while holding block. That's how the Atlas gets away with it. Okay, so you understand the basic premise, the idea behind this build. Now let's talk about what makes it work. So there's two things that make it work. Armor Master right here, and then Footman's. Now there's some evidence out there that Footman's Diminishing Returns uh, doesn't give you the full block mitigation. That, that may be true, but it's coming back at 160 CP. Since we're using light armor, I still like the extra mitigation. It seems to make me a lot more tanky. However, this is a weak set for trials because you really want to give some group utility, whether it's Ebony, Hercines, Alkosh, Lunar Bastion, Twilight's Remedy, something else but this. But really, it's Armor Master. Armor Master is freakishly powerful. When you have an armor ability slot, it increases your max health. When you use an armor ability, it increases your physical and spell resistance by 10%. You notice that that's not major and minor reward. So you can stack that physical and spell resistance with your major resistance, which is channel focus. That can also stack with your minor resistance, which most uh, groups are going to have running Blessing of Protection or Combat Prayer. So another 1300 resistance, making it possible to hit hard caps and resistance.
So that allows us to be able to cast a lot more, to be a lot more active on the battlefield, to be able to heal ourselves and others and really not have a healer at all. So in order to do that, we need to place two ability bars, two things on our ability bars, shuffle. Now we are magic based. So shuffle is a very, very risk reward thing. If you look at it, it costs 4,000 stamina. That's a lot. Now we have very low stamina based on the race that I have. So that's uh, 17, almost 18K. I really suggest about, about 20K stamina. Now when this, Footman's gets to 160 CP, it's going to be a lot more stamina, so we should be able to hit that number. And if you're an Imperial or some other race that has a benefit from stamina, like a Nord, obviously be better. But we're going to use this. So it's going to dodge. Now we're not using Tavas to get a million ultimate, but it's still worthwhile to use this. Because if you're dodging attacks, you're actually saving stamina. Plus it can remove snares, which is sometimes nice. And it gives you that 10 second buff. So that's how we're going to have it on our back bar. Our front bar is going to have harness magic. So another reason to use light armor is this effect. The bonus of 30% getting magic back while casting this. So basically we use this and get about an 8k self shield. So this is our main defense on my front bar. I don't even use a heal on my front bar because I don't need to. I can just use harness. And engine guardian, we're going to get to that in a second. The added benefit of using this as a defensive is we get magic back for using it. So in five pieces of light armor, it costs about 3,200 magic to cast us. But if we're taking uh, elemental damage, you can absorb and get back almost a thousand magic. So almost a 9k damage yield. You can scale it even higher if you like with the bastions and champion points. And it returns back magic to you. It's an amazing defensive and it counts for our resistance. So these two things here are core to our abilities. When in doubt, it's more useful to cast harness on our front bar to keep up your 10 second armor master buff. Remember that it's 10 seconds. So you're gonna have to be really diligent keeping that up because if you don't, look at your physical resistance. It's not a whole lot. So keeping up just one harness here or one shuffle, 5,000 more physical resistance. Keeping up channel focus or restoring focus, another 5,000. So that's how we get those two numbers. If you let those things go down, you're going to hit, get hit very, very hard and you will feel it. Okay, so another ability core to the Templar and tanking is channel focus or restoring focus. Now you have two options here and both morphs are incredible. This one gives you back magic. Now, getting back the magic is super useful for a small group where you're pretty much the primary healer or off healer. However, the other morph restoring focus makes you a lot more tanky. Gives you the minor damage reduction, gives you minor vitality so you get healed more. It's just incredible. So restoring focus, if you're going to try this in a trial and you really want to be a main tank, take the other morph. But if you're looking just for some more sustain and efficiency, take channel focus. Another thing channel focus does for us, da 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 gives us major mending, 25% more increased healing done. It's just incredible. So it's giving us 25% more healing while we stay in it, and it's giving us those physical resistance. It lasts 18 seconds, and then when we move out of it, it lasts another eight seconds. So there's a trick with using this. Basically, you can cast on the ground. You can move out of it and just go ham here. As long as you just go back and touch it, guess what? Refreshes above. Do the same thing, come back in here, touch it. Now, right as it's about to expire, one second, touch it, leave. Guess what? Look at my buffs. I still get that benefit. So actually, it doesn't last 18 seconds if you play it like this, it lasts 26. Now, Major Mending will only last 22. Well, that's a way to get more bang for your buck. And it costs 700 magic. It's nothing. Absolutely nothing. The combination of channel focus and harness magic for our magic sustain is incredible. Also with our little engine guardian droid here, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Bread and butter taunt here is inner rage. The magic taunt, it's ranged, gives a great synergy, um, and it's easy to use because it's not going to drain our stamina. So in a trial, a more specific trial run, pierced armor or ransack is going to be a lot better because the the, the debuff, the my major fracture. Typically, groups are going to have someone you run this anyways, whether it's a night blade, a dragonite, or, or something else that's going to give this buff anyways. So I prefer inner rage. Remember, as a tank, you can run out of magicka and survive. You cannot run out of stamina and survive. So that's the ideology that I like to take up with my thinking is I'd rather uh, overcast magic abilities and have stamina to block and survive than undercast. So when in doubt, use inner rage to taunt. 
If you're at full stamina and there's plenty of corpses around to repent, feel free to use Ransack, especially if you have other stamina DPS that could benefit from the major fracture and no one else is running it. Those two things are really nice. And then we have, of course, our two primary sources of healing, Breath of Life. It's simple, it's effective, it's nasty, it's great. It basically heals two people, one big time, one not so big time. So in a four-player group, this becomes really, really essential. In a trial, it sucks. Why? Because you have 12 people. Trials, you want the more of the AOE, Grand Healing, Healing Springs, uh, or Lustrous Healing, whichever one you go. Four-player content, that's half of your group. And it was nerfed a while back, but still, two players is better than nothing. So you can almost heal to full everyone with two Breath of Life's. And that's what's going to make the content so much easier for you. Because you can hold block, you don't have to have a Resto Staff, and you get all the passives of reducing damage taken while blocking and just hitting Breath of Life. The other heal here is Repentance, and it gives you minor endurance, minor intellect, so it basically gives you that uh, regen, 10% regen that's really hard to get. In fights where there's not so many mobs, which is not usually the case, we still have a backup way to self-sufficiently get back stamina. 2500. Now with the armor traits and all the things that we got on there to reduce block cost, that's going to allow you to block a lot more attacks. Hopefully, you're either going to have some uh, bodies show up so you can repent them, or a potion's going to come off cooldown every 45 seconds. Those two things are how you're going to get your stamina back up. You're not going to need to taunt with stamina, so you can use this. And really, when it comes down to it, all you have to do with your stamina is just block. When in doubt. Lastly, we have Blazing Spear. Now, Blazing Spear is a synergy, but really what I like for it is an AoE stun. So, just like this. So it's not really the damage that I'm concerned with, it's just the stun. And so you can stun a bunch of mobs, reducing the damage that you take and your friends take, well, because they're stunned. Obviously you can't stun a boss, but you can stun a lot of the adds. And Repentance just pop, guess what? 3.6k self-heal, AoE group heal if someone was there, and stamina pack for those little droids. It's perfect for small group like this. So that's why I use Blazing Spear. Secondarily, people get synergies, they get back stamina, everyone needs that, so it's just my go-to. It allows me to heal a little bit harder with the Adric Spear passive ability here, which is increased damage bonus and critical strikes by 10%. So it's worth putting one of those Adric Spear abilities on your back on your front bar and also on your back bar. So we don't have a whole lot of room for it here, but we can change out Stalwart Guard. I love Stalwart Guard. It costs a lot of stamina and it guards some ones, and you're not always gonna need to use this, but for four player content, it's really nice for a melee DPS or someone taking a lot of pressure or you know a healer if you actually have a full healer, but in certain circumstances, no one's gonna need it. Now you can swap in some more interesting abilities. You could even use a charge if you wanted to, I don't know, I don't recommend it, but really puncturing sweeps back here if you wanted more DPS and uh, sustainability to survivability and doing damage is great. Um, also, using empowering sweeps. If you want to main tank, like, you know, main tanking vet Manacora, you're going to need to reduce the damage. So, it reduces damage to you and an additional 4% for each enemy hit. So, when you're hitting hard cap and resistance, you're getting all the benefits from sword and shield, and you're using empowering sweep on cooldown, you're not taking a whole lot of damage, and especially if you're in light armor. So, that's something you can put in your back bar to get benefit from the spear wall here. Uh, piercing Spear, excuse me, more crit damage. And then also you're really, really going to need to run Heroic Slash if you're tanking some of those big, nasty Vet Maw, Vet Sanctum Ophidia. Because Minor Maim, like I said before, applies to bosses' effects, not only just their attacks. So maintaining that, and that's also going to drain some of your stamina, so you have to be careful. So that's what I would slot in here, Stalwart Guard. Uh, I do have Nova back here just by default because it's really nice and I usually don't need a whole lot extra crit healing so I don't worry about it. But in situations where I'm going to take a whole lot of damage, empowering sweep, you betcha. The front bar, what I usually swap in here is defensive stance. So since I'm using footmans, uh, I don't need to stack a whole lot of block damage reduction and damage mitigation. But it is nice if you want to reflect back something uh, and the other one heals you. But I'm not sure of any healing, so that's why I go with this. Remembrance is the ultimate that I absolutely love and not a lot of people use it and I don't know why. Last four seconds, it reduces uh, damage to allies in the target area and the target area is 20 meters. It's an oh crap self heal. So it basically grants major mending from itself. So look right here, Ritual of Passive Passage also grants Major Mending, so just by using this ability itself, it's going to Major Mend itself. And that's 8.3k self-healing, AoE, and 23% damage reduction. 
Now, since that's not a specific buff, the 23%, you can actually run it and stack it with other specific things. So if someone drops a Nova and then you do a Remembrance at the same time, your party is taking what, 27 and 23? Do the math there. 60% damage reduction in area for everybody? That's pretty good. So that's why I like it. Lastly, the reason I like it is it's an oh crap panic button. What's the channel time? Four seconds. You can't be stunned when that happens. So essentially it allows you to regenerate two times, two ticks of regeneration, specifically stamina. Four seconds, that also takes a lot of time off your potion cooldown, allowing you to get a much needed tripod if you're out of resources. So that's why I like it there. Not good for every application, it's really not. But for oh crap moments where like everyone's taking damage and you just need to survive just a little bit longer to kill the boss, remove the damage, you can't be CC'd, you get back resources, get through the fight. That's why I like Remembrance. Okay, let's finally talk about gear and some things you can do to optimize this type of tank setup. So some things to optimize the gear setup is really the sturdy trait. Sturdy is exceptionally powerful on a tank, especially when using light armor. Reduce block costs. Since we're magicka base, we don't have a high pool of stamina. This really helps us maintain that block, especially the more mobs they are around. Fuse is really a good trait on your main pieces as well because you can use the prismatic enchant, getting a lot more bang for your bucks in terms of stats. Prismatic enchants are so important for like some build like this where you're going to need stamina, you're going to need magic, you're going to need a lot of health. So a PvP build or a tank build where all three stats are really viable, Prismatic can't beat it. So hypothetically, you want to run it on your three big pieces. Head, chest, legs. I need to run around sturdy on everything else. But right now, Footman's only comes in a couple of crappy traits. So once it gets updated in chains, then you're going to want heavy armor on your chest, on your legs, or helm, um, and infused, and then do the rest in sturdy to be optimized. So right now, not exactly optimized. Lastly, you can do the Footman's reduced block cost. Now, if you're not having trouble maintaining stamina, you can get more aggressive. You could do spell damage, magic recovery, reduce magic cost depending on what you wanted to do. Do a little more damage and create it with spell damage. Um, if you don't really see the value in running Footman's, run Willpower, run robust Willpower so you get a little bit more stamina out of it and still stick with that five piece armor master. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. But these two five pieces are what I like the best. I really think there's value in reduced bash and reduced block costs and stacking the crap out of it along with the sturdy trait. As far as attributes go, really what you want to do is not concern yourself with attributes because there's a bunch of different races in the game. What you want to concern yourself is with numbers. Essentially, I recommend 20k stamina. Now, I play this character as PvP, I play as a magic DPS, so it's just not viable for me to go respect my attributes every, you know, day and spend a lot of gold doing that. So I don't. I have this gear so I can go play with other characters like my Imperial as well. So with that being said, 20k at least 25k health you really need a lot and you could probably sacrifice a bit of magic to get that health to around 30k 20k about 25 to 30k and then 20k magic would be ideal so getting the more bang for your buck with infused prismatic making it legendary using akuda being at 501 champion points and then once this stuff gets updated to 160 cp and you can get it gold you betcha, it's going to be a lot easier to hit them numbers. Another thing is the defending trait on the swords is really important. Now you can use the crusher enchant, and there's also one that reduces weapon damage that I like, or you got one that increases your spell damage that you could use to increase your self-healing. So that's really nice as well. But the defending trait is really powerful just on one sword, especially since we're lacking some mitigation. 2k physical and spell resistance. That's why we're so tanky in light armor. Um, and then on the shield, I do health and reduce cost here. But remember, the shield is a large piece. It is a large piece. So you can do the infused prismatic as well and get a whole lot more stats. Problem is, it's really expensive and I've been going through gold like crazy. So I don't have a whole lot of Kajigatos or uh, gold mats to upgrade this and legendary this out. Lastly, uh, you can see my spell damage is terribly low. But I can actually heal like a truck and it's because of my champion points. Segway! So I just do the the stupid here healer, full healer champion point thing. 100 in the Blessed, 67 in Elfborn. 
reason why I'm not trying to do damage with this build. So throwing a Blazing Spear for me, it's not about doing damage, it's more about stunning and group utility. So I don't need anything out of the DPS tree. So when your spell damage is really low, you can still find effective healing just by stacking a lot of healing in your champion points. So those two things are what I like to do. I do my usual 60-60 split. I don't know if that's good and it's probably not as beneficial as doing some other things. Okay, in this final tree here, this heavy armor focus, is only for wearing five pieces of heavy armor. So it's not going to benefit us at all to put that in there. So quick recovery for self-healing is nice, or if you're going to focus more on your harness magic for a shield, it was at 8,700 last time. We put 47 points into it. It's up to 10K. And we still get 1,000 back. So that looks a lot more enticing for a self-shield. So the heavy armor focus would be really nice to get us to the hard cap mitigation, but we're using light armor for it, and I prefer light armor for more casting, more healing to you in the group. As far as the resources go, I do reduce magic cost, not stamina cost, because really I should be only using about one, maybe two stamina abilities in certain applications. And then uh, recovery. Why? You're not regenerating stamina while blocking, so it doesn't make sense to stack a whole lot of there. Plus, as a Templar, I can repent corpses. I have Engine Guardian to give me back resources, so it's something I really don't have to worry about. Shadow Ward is very, very handy, reduced cost of blocking. So I don't know where diminishing return is with reduced block cost, but it would be interesting to do a test and find out. So hey, if you know in the, champ in the comments, please let me know. Okay, so unlike my Magic Nightblade, I'm pretty much entirely dependent on someone else for damage. But I can survive quite a bit. So I'm not going to go do VMA because it'd be like a 45 minute video. But I can do just tanking something here in Arsinium, a world boss. And kind of show you how I swap things in and out for uh, my benefit. So if I'm going to tank a million things, I really need a lot of healing. Ritual Retribution at Snares gives magic. That's a really good thing to go in the slot of Star Regard. We're not going to use it. Why? Well, we don't have anyone to guard. Another really good ability is Purifying Light. It does damage. Uh, it gives a magic pool, blows up, and gets healing at their feet. It really costs nothing. It gives the heal over time. And it's great for melee because it's just going to sit there and heal you while people are beating on you. Another thing that does really well for us is grants us ultimate. Also gives you and your people around you minor sorcery, increasing your spell damage by 5%. We don't have a whole lot of spell damage, but hey, every little bit helps. So I'm going to slot that in there and just be kind of more ultra healing tanky-ish type thing. Also, I'm going to take out Nova since I'm playing by myself and it's going to come down to pure mitigation. And I'm going to put Empowering Sweep for damage mitigation. What that will do is also give me some more healing here with Piercing Spear. So when I'm doing a dungeon, I don't always just have a static bar. You see all these things that I got here? This is all the stuff that I use and swap out and test and change and, and do all that different stuff because there's just no, every dungeon you have this exact build. You have to constantly swap depending on the situation. So with that out of the way, let's tank some stuff. First thing I'm going to do, buff spam execute. So I'm going to buff with harness, get that down, channel focus, get my shuffle, all my buffs are up. Let's taunt this little sucker. I'm going to do the range taunt, charge a heavy, rip them. Now, I don't have to hold block all the time. Since I'm used to his effects, I'm just going to watch when I do. Block, right? Obviously. So we're not going to get too carried away. We're just going to keep up our taunt. Keep channel focus down. Our armor skill is running out. So we're going to use harness, not blocking. Now we're going to swap. I'm not gray, so I'm going to recast shuffle. I'm going to use harness kind of as an oh crap buffer. Okay, so now we have a lot of crap going on, right? Let's reduce our damage with an empowering sweep. We're going to recast focus. We're going to put some purifying lights on here for self-healing. Right there, I'm going to throw a spear to stun these mobs. And you can see I'm not blocking right now because I have magic proc. So all I'm going to do is just spam harness magic. Spam it, spam it, spam it. Look, my health. Barely going down. So now i got an engine and guardian droid. I, I repent it. Get my magic back up. Keep these things taunted. My buffs are down. So I'm going to go ahead and boop. Took a big hit. Breath of life. No big deal. Shuffle, reapply these things, empowering sweep for damage reduction. Now I got some repentance here that I can do. Stamina's back to full. Got an engine guardian droid, harness magic, and this is it. You're just dancing and using your resource pools wisely. So I have tons of stamina, so I'm not going to taunt with my magic one. I'm going to taunt with my stamina one. I'm going to reapply my buff here so I get more ultimate. 
Then I'm going to get shuffle back down. I'm really low, so I'm going to use a tripod. Bang, stamina's back up. Empowering sweep for damage reduction. Harness. I'm going to go back to my rune and step in it to get my buff. There we go. He beats on me. I got some excessive magic here, so I'm just going to spam purifying lights. Repentance these droids. I got some spears. More magic than I need. Focus down. Shuffle down. Now I'm not going to block to get some stamina back and just use Harness and rely on Harness. See? So I can just rely on Harness and basically face tank everything. Do to do. Some of the droids are going to die here soon and that's what we're going to use for our stamina pool. And look, I'm at full resources again. Buffs are back up. Purifying Light. That's it. So I'm just going to block here and not cast anything until I'm in an oh crap moment. And I'm going to see how I react. Da, 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 da. I'm about to die. I'm about to die. Remembrance. Okay. So I'll come out of the remembrance and what am I going to do? Boom. Dodge roll and a potion. Now the dodge roll almost didn't go off. Hold block. Get my shuffle down. Get my harness down. I'm really low on stamina so I'm just going to rely on harness magic. Stun these droids. Harness. Breath. Breath. I'm up. Harness. This. I'm really relying on engine guardian droid. If I just get a couple of these guys down, it'll be no problem. Got a couple of them down, stamps going back up, empowering sweeps for damage and also for mitigation sake. Harness, a couple droids have died, stamina's back up, potion's almost coming off cooldown. I'm going to keep him taunted best I can. There's no other players here, so it's really easy. So let's go back to our channel focus, get that 8 seconds buff, kind of come here. Put that down, throw a spear to stun the mob, and this is all I'm doing. This, in a dungeon. Just add, add throwing in a taunt here and there. So you can sustain basically indefinitely doing this. Now it gets tricky sometimes and rely on remembrance to be your oh crap moment. But I'm balancing my resources. See how I'm taunting them now? Why? Because engine droids give me uh, stamina. So I don't need to use my magic to taunt there. Harness, channel focus for my resistance. Now my magic's out, so I'm not going to mess with using magic right now. This guy needs taunted, so I'm going to use my stam. Try to repentance those droids. I missed it. I'm out of juice right now, right? Oh, no. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4. Got my two ticks of resources, and guess what came back? Stamina. So now I can use that. Keep shuffle down. Just try to stun these mobs a couple times. Repentance my droid. Channel focus. See? Use a tripod. Look at my resources. You can do that pretty much all day. Now you're not going to kill anything, but guess what? You can maintain five, six ads and a boss on you at a time. That allows all your DPS to do what they do best, and that's do damage. So in a dungeon, if you're having trouble with a specific boss, play it like this. Now, a lot of people will think it's weird to have a healer tank, and it's not easy balancing all these resources. But look at your magic and stamina differently with this build. There are two pools that can basically do the same thing. Um, stamina can heal with vigor, though we don't have. But what stamina can do is you can get your armor buff here. You can get your armor buff from armor masters, one of two ways, with magic or stamina. So you're going to use that depending on the situation. You can use your taunt with armor, with magic or stamina. So use that depending on what you have. Do you have a green beam uh, of stamina and you're already topped off? Make sure your 10 second armor buffs up and you're taunting. Do you have a blue beam uh, where you can taunt? Inner, inner rage? Harness magicka. Do you have droids laying around you need stamina? Repent. Can you CC targets and stun them so they're not doing damage to you and your allies? Blazing spear. Are you in an oh crap moment? Remembrance. Uh, or do you need mitigation, just pure damage reduction for a while? Empowering sweeps. Or guard if it was in this place. When in doubt, you need a big breath, big breath, just heal. And lastly, this is not the only way to Templar tank, and it's not the quote-unquote best Templar tank. There's a lot of different ways to tank, whether it's a Templar or anything else. One such specific way is kind of the Shredder build that I'm working on. Five pieces of Alkosh 
which seems odd for a tank to run it, but the physical resistance and spell resistance debuff is what you're trying to run. As a tank, you're going to have a lot of synergies on top of you. So having a stamina version of something like Atlas, where you're basically applying debuffs primarily and buffs with Tava's Blessing, is a really cool, interesting way to tank as well. So you can put the Crusher Enchant on your uh, Maul here, use your Taunt, so you're stripping armor, and that's what the Shredder does well. There's a lot of different ways to creatively play a tank. You don't have to be just a block knight where you sit there and do block and never do anything active and you're not healing yourself or anyone else you should treat it the way you treat any build investigate explore try different things i fail all the time but you know what i get up i ask players i try different things we screw up we learn and we move forward and through that growth process is how you find if a build works or not if it works for you who cares if it doesn't work for everyone else stick to what you do best and that is working on your individual play to help you or anyone in the group. Thank you so much for watching. I know I've been slacking with the videos. It's been a whole heck of a long week. We're going to get back to things with a lot of content coming up next, I promise. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. We'll see you next time.